my Instagram. So this is my first time. And I'm going to give you guys an energy update for this week. If you guys aren't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, go check it out. It's Kendra Divine Purpose. And we're just getting things up and running on YouTube, so one second. Okay, I think we're live. It's just being really slow. Perfect. All right. Recording in progress. <laughs> Instagram, you probably just heard my computer talking to me. Okay, so this week we have an intense week because we not only have the full moon on Friday or Saturday, depending on where you live, we also have the beginning of the Lionsgate portal that's going to start next Monday. That's also our galactic new year, if you guys follow in my astrology. Um, and then we start the Lionsgate portal, which it goes from the 26th to the 12th of August. And this seeds a new consciousness. So right now what we're seeing is we're like straddling um, the fence between the, the past and where we're going, the future, right? And so you can start to see things coming to fruition and um, like it's not exactly time for that to happen yet. And so it's like this, it's just you're straddling, but also understand that there's going to be, um, there's finger of God um, that is coming in with faded aspects. So you might be getting new opportunities and whether that be in um, your work or creative endeavors or with partnerships. Understand that if you, are, you have the tendency to kind of jump on the boat late, um, these aspects are, are, are pointing towards a faded event. So this is the time to say yes to those things that come up, but there is going to be abrupt endings. So. There's relationships and working situations in your life that are have met its, um, its deadline, its ending. And so you might see like, say you have an assistant and all of a sudden your assistant gets an amazing opportunity to go do something else or um, just where you guys have been, it's run its course. So this is going to call you into your your Saturn placement. It's it's the things that we have put put off or that we haven't necessarily done. Um, it's calling us back to that. So say your assistant leaves and you don't know any of your passwords and all of these things. It's like you know how to run one aspect of your business, but not necessarily um, the everyday things. And um, of course, we need to delegate in order to to run um, our empires. Um, in our own lives, but um, this is calling for us to look at aspects of our lives that we've been putting off. So look where that's falling for you and also be ready for new opportunities, but understand that you can't just sit in your house and wait for somebody to come knock at your door. You need to be putting yourself out there. And so even though this energy, um, we have um, Eris, the goddess of discord, so she comes in to shake stuff up and she's not just doing it for the sake of you know stirring the pot and then running away no you're gonna see um like say somebody's in the realm of like child trafficking you're gonna see those things come to light so it's important more than ever right now that we are finding our our sovereignty our center and, and walking in that because there is going to be a lot of chaos 
that is um, very distracting if you are easily swayed, you know, either way. Um, also know that this full moon is at a midpoint between Saturn and Pluto. And so Saturn is, is like, you can refer to it as like Satan, or um, it's like the rings of Saturn to me are like, like the, the, it's like the bars that hold um, people in, in prison, right? And then Pluto is, is the underworld. And so it's all about death and rebirth. And so Venus is asking for us, um, it's shedding light on things that aren't really working for us anymore. And Venus likes to birth new things, but right now we're in the death process. And this, the ending of this week and next week will give rise to new creations. So understand that if there's anything that you've um, put off, you know, doing your healing work, all these things are going to be coming up. Know that we can't run from things. Also, this is, um, I'm getting a message about star seeds and just, I hate to put labels on things, even masculine, feminine, um, but there is a collective and it's asking us, are we choosing to, you know, connect with God and higher states of consciousness or are we choosing addiction? And this isn't about judgment. This is saying, um, these are the two polarities of ne Neptune. It's like, you know, um, psychic abilities and connection with, with God, source, creator, spirit, or like psychosis and addiction. And so it's saying that your gifts, um, your, your abilities from a higher state of consciousness are waiting to be gifted to you. But you can't access them if you are at a lower vibration because our frequency is our is our key. It's our key. When we're doing things like drinking or drugs or even codependency and just having these toxic relationships that keep us um, entangled and in a lower state of consciousness, a lower frequency, that means that we're not going to be able to access that key that you know, awakens us and, and allows for us to step through this portal of the lion's gate where we access a higher dimension of consciousness. And um, we all have choice points that we go through in our life. And normally right before we hit a big epiphany or awakening, we go through like a dark night of the soul. And so things right now, or they may have been, felt really dark and gloomy and um, there's a lot of depression and just, you know, feeling like uh, this loneliness. And especially when we come here and we know that the way that they're doing things, it's painful and it's separated. And it's this perception of separation, this lens that we take on in order to have this individual perspective and this experience that creates wounds and it makes us feel alone and so it's only natural that a lot of us have reached out to things like either you know toxic relationships or you know serial relationships or drugs and alcohol um this isn't to shame you it's to say we've reached a higher state of consciousness and now you're at a choice point do you want to ascend or do you want to stay where you're at and continue to um, do the behavior, the behavior that now can be, you know, taken off? And these aspects are helping us to overcome things like addiction that, you know, um, it's literally just a choice now. You're not going to see the um, negative withdrawals unless you stay in that dimension of consciousness and you if you've heard of like a dry drunk somebody um that still lives like they're drunk even though they don't drink anymore a lot of times i see this when people stop using because their wife or husband wanted them to stop or their parents but it wasn't really their choice um so you have to just look at the reasons why you're picking up something 
Um, what are you coping for? What are you trying to access? For me, it was um, it was a coping mechanism to give me confidence to talk to people and and to make friends where I felt like I was I was very shy and I didn't um, feel comfortable talking to people. And I met my choice point with just having an occasional drink earlier this year. And it's like, it's, it's a no fly zone. It's, it's never, I'm never going to pick up another drink ever again, because now I know that I know the level of consciousness I'm accessing. I remember the truth of who I am. And therefore it's like, that isn't even worth it. And I can, I can step forward and make connections without using um, a drink in order to break the ice. So know that we um, are all sitting at that um, choice point. So choose wisely whether you want to accelerate in your consciousness and step through this portal, or if you want to stay, you know, even smoking, when we're doing it out of compulsion, um, what they're saying right now, it's it's just about the fact that it it suppresses or it um, pulls down your frequency, and your frequency is key here. Um, so let me go over my notes. There was so much coming through, I just don't want to miss anything. Uh, so the 22nd, we have, um, we're going to see Mars having a hard aspect with Pluto. So the 22nd is also um, the Ascension Day of Mary Magdalene. So it's like, it's really connected to um, this awakening of, of the divine feminine, the goddess within each and every one of us, even if it, you're in a masculine embodiment. Um, so you're going to feel the feminine aspect of yourself wanting to ascend. It's it's asking to be birthed. It's, it's wanting to... Um, come out in a way that she maybe has felt suppressed in the past. Um, and so there's also strong energies around external power issues. So, and I know that um, there's a lot of feminine leadership that have Eris, which is the goddess of discord, um, heavy in their chart. So if you're not understanding like um, an energy like Nancy Pelosi, that's like an heiress energy, right? So understand that there's always two points of polarity. So we can be really like meek and not ever say what it is that we mean, or we can be like a bitch from hell that just like takes whatever she wants, right? Um, also, there is going to be um, some things coming out about China. So I don't really want to get into the news that's not a level of consciousness that i live from but i that's just it's coming through right now to give you guys the information to know what to look out for so understand that when we have a full moon it always goes back to the cycle where we had this new moon so this full moon particularly is in aquarius and so when we had our aquarius new moon it was around um, January 12th, 2020. And so that was when the virus was, um, you know, coming to more so to America. So what you're going to see shed light on is information about the, where the guy, the virus came from. So China is going to be highlighted. Um, I stepped out of that whole entire dynamic of consciousness a long time ago. Um, because I understand that it is about this desire to twist our arm to make us say, okay, give me something so that I can come out. Um, this was a bigger um, thing than just an accidental virus. No, this was definitely something that was created on purpose to give you all vaccines to and mess with the DNA. Anyways. Um, understand that the last time we had this, this aspect was we saw um, a rage against like the church and the way that they were doing things. And so Martin Luther, um, I'm just seeing him like put something on the door of the church. And so I know that that had um, big implications. And 
you're going to see a lot of emotional intensity. So I know that there's been a lot of people that have um, just really realized that they haven't been treated fairly in their workplace. And so you have people that are just, you know, walking out of where they work. And I just want to advise you that if, if that is your choice, you know, go with it, but understand that you're going to, you know, um, because there is these creative opportunities that are coming knocking at our door, um, be, be mindful to keep a lookout for that. But I would just make sure that you aren't leaping and falling on your face. <laughs> um, okay, so what else? A lot of truth and disclosures are coming out. Um, this is also connected because we have Aquarius, so it's connected to like internet and um, new inventions and higher states of consciousness. Um, but it's also like galactic news and earthquakes. So we might see disclosures coming out about, you know, aliens or whatever. I mean, we are ultimately all aliens, just in case you guys didn't know, we didn't come from here, we came to here. Um, and so the, the Mayan calendar, they have their day out of time and their galactic new year. Their day out of time is um, July 25th. And so that is for celebration and to really prepare for what this the new year is. And their new year is the yellow electric seed year. So this means the seed is all about planting and harvesting um, new creations. So when we think about how we have the, the past and the future and we're sitting in the middle, you're gonna see like the old world order and this desire to do something different. It's like the, the people versus, you know, the, the control matrix, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's, you're gonna see either people like coming together and like rioting or people wanting to choose out of the way we're doing things to go create communities. And it's like power of the people, grassroots, um, coming together to build something new, which is what we're supposed to be doing. So this is great, but we also don't need to rage against what is. You know, if we were to just focus our attention on finding people that, you know, vibrate with us, um, vibrate in harmony. Because remember, we've all been getting um, messages from God. We've all been getting our individual downloads. And so then we come together with our soul groups and you, you're, you go over like the things that you guys have been getting and you're like, oh my God, I was told I was supposed to create a school. Oh my God, I was told I was supposed, I'm supposed to create a community. But when it comes through and you're just sitting in your own individual perspective, it's like, oh my God, like how, how am I going to do all of this? And that energy is also coming to the surface this week because you have, um, you have Venus in Virgo. And so she's going to have a lot of tasks put on her because remember like our assistant's leaving or, you know, maybe some, somebody walks out of your um, job. And so that means that you have to take on their work. Um, so it's about getting a plan and having steps to take so that it doesn't feel so incredibly overwhelming so that you know exactly you know how you're going to navigate it and that's also why it's good not to just walk out because you're feeling intense emotions and you know it's like the last straw but if you need that push if you were going to keep sacrificing yourself and going to a job every day that you hate and miss your opportunity because what I'm seeing right now is like somebody that always walks to work on this one street and like the opportunity of a lifetime is if they were to go somewhere else instead of walking to that job every day but they keep missing it and maybe it's just on the next street you know so think about that um, put yourself in in situations where you're following the feeling of celebration because with the energy of of the mind calendar having that day out of time that comes on 
let's see, Sunday. Um, so you're gonna see uh, that illuminated moon on Friday that is going to be shedding some light on a lot of things that are gonna be coming to the surface. And then you're gonna have a day to digest it. And then it's time for it to come out again, to celebrate, to um, start thinking about the seeds that you wanna be planting. Now, ultimately we have been planting these seeds since 2020. Um, and we're setting up the foundation for the next 20 years of our life. So we, depending on um, where you're at in your own journey, in your own cycle, we've all been getting this push from the universe to create massive changes in our lives and in the structures and the foundation of our life. So if you didn't move or get a new job or a new partnership in you know February, then you did it in June. If you didn't do it in June, then you're gonna wait until the universe you know, pushes you in December. And so remember that um, now I'm seeing like us all having puzzle pieces and it's like right now you can spend time on putting those puzzle pieces together to see the whole picture or you can get distracted and you know, it's like, if you didn't know what puzzle you were putting together, what the picture was going to look like. And right now, what you have in front of you is a leg. And so you're arguing with the next person saying, no, it's a leg. And the other person saying, no, it's a head. And the other person saying, no, it's a tail. Instead of arguing, see that maybe it's a big elephant and you just, you, you haven't put all the pieces together so you can't see it clearly. So instead of arguing about your own individual perspective, and trying to use you understand that we all have our different lenses in which we view the world through and um my nose always starts to run when i'm suppressing my psychic abilities so there's lots of messages that are wanting to come out for all of you guys that are listening but i'm gonna stay focused and not give individual messages um so let's see what else Oh, and there's also um, an aspect to Chericlo, which is, Chericlo is Chiron's wife. And so if you guys haven't heard of Chiron, he's the, the it's the archetype of the wounded healer. And so Chericlo is, is the one that heals him. She's, um, she heals by her silence and her ability to just stay in her peace and in her center. Um, and so that to me represents, you know, when, when we stay in the consciousness of Christ, we don't even see ailments. Like when people sit down for readings with me, now that I'm doing them in person on a regular basis, um, it's like people will ask me like, what do you channel? Well, I'm a clear conscious channel of Christ. I'm here to walk out as the embodiment of the Divine Mother. And so that means that every single day you're, you're allowing for your own internal process, but I'm not sitting there giving people messages or doing healing work and not doing it on myself because that would create, that would just like, that almost killed me. That creates such a disharmony in our nervous system that that's why you see the polarities of Neptune, which is psychic ability and psychosis. Um, it's when we aren't, doing our work to match the consciousness in which we are channeling. And so I feel that we are all here to actualize the Christ, the highest level that is to um, remember that we are God goddess and to actually get there, not just know it and stay in your separate individual perspectives. No, we're here to walk each other home. And the thing about it is if you are, if you relate to being a, a creator, God, goddess of this world, then as we, you know, started out this, this planet, we are going to walk all of the, the fragmentation home. And so however long that takes is however long it takes, but we're going to be here until we're all home. So don't fear you know, going to hell or whatever, the 100, 144,000 had nothing to do with us ascending and leaving people here. Like, as the, um, 
representing the divine mother. It's like, that means all of you are my children. Why would I look at anybody as being less worthy to go home? That makes no sense. You're all a part of me. And so it's hard to understand that we are all one when you're perceiving through the lenses of separation. But it is to, instead of look for our, our differences, which is natural when we're going through the process of individuation, that is to find how we are and are not like other. But in order to come home, it is to see our, our, the way we are the same, to know your sovereignty, to know your divinity, to know what you can bring to the world but also be looking for how everything is connected, how we are the same. Um, that is how we um, bridge with people and how we, we bring it all back together. And so uh, there's a regenerative energy that is helping us. And so there's going to be a lot of changes on the planet. Like I was told last week, we are to... Um, bring water back to Sedona where I'm living now because there used to be water here and the earth is asking for water to come back and what I keep seeing in, in, in just visions is more greenery and it's like I see the red rocks but the way everything looks it's like almost like it's like Kauai or something and so there is going to be earth changes because the mother aspect of um, the earth that we live on, she is regenerating herself and she's going back to a state of balance. And so that means that we need to do our internal work, but also to become more conscious about our relationship with the earth. It's like, instead of just, you know, tearing down trees and building whatever the hell we want to build because we think we have the right because we own land like the fact that we think as human beings that we can own land this never made sense to me um you don't own it you're borrowing it you're she's allowing you to hold space and if you've seen things like you know fires taking down your houses or earthquakes or you've just had this like where it feels like you're just have bad luck it might be because you haven't ever asked the earth if it's okay to build there or if it's okay for you to live there. And, you know, that might feel like, well, how do I know? You'll know, just connect. It's just like, how do you know that your baby is hungry before it talked? You just know because you connect. You have to have a desire and a... a just a desire to attune to the world around you, to ask, what is this? What is this for? Can, can I co-create with this? Not, this is mine and I'm going to take it. Like, we have to take off these lenses of lack consciousness and, and separated individual, you know, fight for everything that we, we think is right or we desire to have. No, this, this is a very primitive primitive level of consciousness that will only keep us enslaved and so every single day we have a choice and it's always between love or fear no matter what the the out the external circumstances are it's always to love or to fear um so yeah uh find your center And also, this is, you're going to start, if you allow yourself to follow, you know, where you're being called to create, and um, you start to see that you're coming together with your, your soul groups, then to be intentional about what it is that you all are going to create together. And um, I keep hearing... Tell them to be very specific what it, with what it is that they are desiring to manifest and when two or more are gathered. So when you come together and you meet people that you really vibe with, if you can, you know, hold hands and 
and ground in what it is that you guys desire to create together and whether that be a partnership or a book or you know a, a website whatever like a new business be like it's asking us to be more conscious and sacred about setting intentions and grounding that intention into the earth so that it's this you know harmonious process where it's like we're getting inspiration from god source spirit and we're allowing that to like germinate within us we're sending the roots down so it's like this co-creative process that keeps regenerating us um let's see again this is also like with venus really influencing us we're we're bringing in new romantic partnerships but remember first we need to clean up our unfinished business we need to clean up um whether that means you know ending or cutting ties with a previous relationship maybe you've had somebody like on the back burner or somebody that you go back to when you're alone it's about really cutting that and making it clean a clean break like this this we can't do this anymore i know with a lot of my sisters um one of them will be with me really soon and i can feel her um but we've all been in this fasting energy of like even even some of them that have had partners um, that have partners we've all been um, celibate for some of us have been celibate for years and it's like we were we've been like purifying our vessel and there's like it's like some of us are holding something so sacred that we are going to birth um, this new consciousness this or bring back the Christ consciousness and so um, it's imperative that our vessel has been purified and so each and every one of us can feel that there's a birthing of something in our in our life and whether that you know whatever that is for you it's about being very sacred and listening to what is wanting to be birthed within you to understand that there's going to be a lot of chaos that is going on in the external. And so find where that chaos exists within you. What is that outside showing you that you need to work on inside? Understand that there is no running from, you know, not looking at our stuff. We can't use addictions as a coping mechanism it was understandable as we've been in this density and this especially as like you know highly sensitive people i've never met somebody that uses drugs or alcohol that wasn't incredibly tapped in or incredibly sensitive that didn't have such an amazing gift to give to this world so it has nothing, like the shame programming is another way that it, they keep people enslaved in, in addiction. Because if you make a person feel ashamed of themselves and like they're never going to recover, then they, they feel powerless. They feel powerless and they keep looping because it's the one thing that brings them relief. So understand like I personally get it, but right now, what you're being told what we're all being told is help has arrived and we're all awakening and we're in this together and understand that if you've been you know putting on these foggy lenses in order to cope with life the thing that you've been trying to cope with is is leaving and we're ascending and so just ask yourself you know what what is it worth to you if all of your abilities, all of your gifts were, were waiting for you on the other side of you going through 40 days and 40 nights purging all um, compulsions and addictions from your life, would it be worth it to you? 
Or would you rather spend your life always chasing something in order to find some sort of false sense of relief? And that is a personalized question to each and every one of you. The, the way showers and light workers that are here to anchor the, the consciousness of Christ, that are here to anchor the light in this world to bring the pillars of heaven to earth, they have all been asked, and I, if I haven't personally asked you, I'm asking you now to purify your vessel, to come together with like-minded people to start anchoring this light together. Use this, this time period this week to accelerate, you know, like go, take yourself through a, a juice cleanse or something where you can just purify your vessel as quickly as possible because know that your vibration is your key to stepping through this, this gateway. And it's not about stepping through a gateway and leaving everybody else behind. It's about stepping through this gateway so you can ascend in your level of consciousness so you have the pieces to the puzzle that other people are needing and then you go and share it with your brothers and sisters. That is what we need to do as a collective right now. Um, it isn't about one person reaching a state of enlightenment and then sitting up on their you know, high horse like, oh, you can come to me for answers. No, it is about giving those answers to your brothers and sisters so we can all go home together. Nobody's getting out of this like untouched. Nobody's getting out of this without doing their work and whether you take 50,000 lifetimes and just keep coming back to do your work or, you know, you realize that time is merely an illusion and you wake up today and you start helping your brothers and sisters come back home. The choice is up to you. Everybody has free will. We all know this. Um, so instead of getting wrapped up in the power issues of control that are going on, that will be going on in the world around us, it is about finding where the power lies within you and plugging yourself in um, and walking in that. And also know that there is also this energy of, and it's a feminine energy. And it's like thinking that it's like better than everyone and it triggers like jealousy and um, like bullying. And so notice which end of the spectrum you might be influenced to sway. So if you're feeling like, oh, you know, why does she have X, Y, and Z? Like, um, I, I've been praying for um, my loved ones to for their divine counterparts to come together and I, I'm seeing it manifest and so you know as I going through my own purging process I'm like you know oh this is really hard to be happy when you know you're still in the thick of it you're still going through your shadow process and I, I felt this like this just I want to say final, but it's not final, of this release. And as I was laying there last night and like purging all this stuff out, I saw um, when I went through my Kundalini awakening and right before um, Archangel Michael came and asked me if I was ready and then this flash of light hit me and every question I'd ever asked had been answered in the, just a, a moment. Um, and I got this whole sense of like, oh, I'm right there. I'm about to cross this threshold to this higher level of consciousness. And I could feel it. And then today it was like, and I just kept hearing um, that my wings are, are appearing or something like that. And like all of this information is coming through. So it's like, it's going to feel like, oh my God, I can't get up. And like, if you're looking at the world around you and a lot of your friends are going through this like or they're they're feeling a lot of anxiety understand we often feel anxiety or depression right before a massive shift but it's about when we get stuck and distracted in that lower um, state and we open ourselves up to 
like entities like my grandmother she used to always put white candles around me when I would cry and and be really upset and she would pray and I didn't understand the sacredness of it when I was little um, but I do now and she would always say like she's protecting the space because when you're in that transition you're your chakras are, are open and your your field is is it it's it's um it's expanding it but there's holes in it because it's just like when we're going through um a hormonal upgrade when we're teenagers that's why often at 13 when somebody has like um when they're a shaman or have psychic abilities and because our our um our, our collective does not nurture those abilities. You often see 13 year olds going to psych wards and being put on medication, which is horrible. It's horrible because no one's nurturing their abilities. And so therefore they're going to the polarity, which is psychosis. And then you put them on medication and then they're only able to tap into the lower dimensions of consciousness. And then you wonder why people with schizophrenia are being told to kill people or you kill themselves. It's because you've you've anchored them into a state of consciousness that is like they're only going to be talking to shadow people like how about we all ascend and connect to god a, a spirit a higher level like why don't we stop channeling the pleiadians and octurians and syrians they're all good and well but you can like have a conversation with them without channeling them how about you go to the highest and ask ask god ask for god to step through and channel through you and and then walk it out and every day try to become the embodiment of that Christ on earth. Like that's what we're here to do. And so um, it's really asking us as leaders to step up and, and be that for other people. Because right now we're looking around and while the, the power is shifting, people are going to become afraid as they have been. And so a lot of times during these transition phases, we see a lot of like, you know, people that join cults and things like that, it's because they're searching for somebody to say, hey, it's going to be okay, or I have the answers. And when somebody comes in and they desire to have that power, but they're not coming from a God place, um, they're going to take advantage of people. And so be very mindful before you give your power away and start following somebody that you are idolizing as your god because that is when we can um yeah be taken advantage of and be led to you know just do people's bidding that don't have the highest intentions for us um yeah, so so understand that right now we are preparing for the activation of the Lionsgate portal. The Lionsgate portal starts on the 26th of July. The 26th of July is also the Mayan Galactic New Year, which is the yellow electric seed year. The Lionsgate portal goes from the 26th to the 12th. So right now, while we are preparing for what we are about to step through, it's about purifying all aspects of ourselves. So it's um, because this is preparing us for um, a physical, mental, emotional, and etheric significant shift in consciousness. So everything's about to get upgraded. And it's important that we prepare our vessel. We get out all of the shit, the gunk. We need to dump what is in our cup to make space for what is coming in from God's source creator. Know that when you're going through these energetic purges, um, call upon your guides and guardians, call upon the highest to surround you in light so that you can purge it out and not have these... Um, whatever you want to call them. I don't want to get you guys focused on that. But that's when, you know, we can have things like possession um, that happen, especially if you don't know who you are. <laughs> okay, so call upon the highest to be with you while you go through these shadow processes um, and channel the highest because we become what we are channeling. 
we become the embodiment of that. So don't, um, it's just like when I'm doing readings for people. It just last week I was doing a reading for somebody and then they, because their, their family members were stepping forward and I was giving them messages, they asked me to ask them, you know, what they should do. And I got very confused and distorted and I'm like, why the hell would I ask them? They don't freaking know. Like, how much did they know when they were walking here on the physical with you? Like, how about we just ask God, you know, as, cause like, we, I can have a conversation. They can tell me things about like, you know, that they love you or give you messages and yeah, help you to establish that closure. Maybe they come through and talk, talk about being your spirit guide or whatever it is. But to ask them what you should do, like, well, that's just like asking a human, another human that is going to come from their own distorted lenses. It's like you're sitting here with somebody that can channel the consciousness of God. Why wouldn't you want that to come through? And let's let's lead in that way. Um, so yeah, just I think the message there is just go to the highest. Um, so it's God of your understanding. Remember to connect to everything. To stop taking and thinking that you own and thinking you have the right to do X, Y, and Z. Think of everyone as your brother and sister or your son and daughter, okay? Try to step in and be more so that embodiment of the divine love. And <laughs> that's reminding me of something I, I heard T.L. Swan say yesterday about how God is love and love is integration. God is love because integration of all that is um so she was just comparing like love and integration and not love meaning oh my god i love this and that uplift of positive emotions um it's taking each other as a part of each other that is to love um and know that you can't perceive someone outside of you and worry about them and love them at the same time that is another false matrix program that we just need to control all delete you can't worry about somebody because that is fear and love them at the same time while you are fearing and worrying about them look at the law of vibration if you are worried about them x y and z you're holding this lower frequency intention you're sending energy here you're saying oh my god i'm worried da, 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 da. and so what does that person do when it's in your space, it's only going to be able to, or keep fighting you, saying, no, that's not, it's, one has to rise or lower. So hold the frequency of, I've, I've, if you're a parent and you're letting your kids go off on their own, it's, I know that I, I did the best I could and anything I'm feeling regretful for, share that with them, you know, and instill whatever it is that you need to instill within them and then trust that they have the tools necessary to follow their own path and you're going to support them in whatever that is and see them as that that highest vision and allow them to rise even when they make decisions that you don't agree with because remember that we get into this false matrix of thinking that we need to make everybody the same in order to feel safe. Do we actually want to all be the same? No. <laughs> it's just that, again, we're putting our puzzle pieces together, and you have a leg, and I have a trunk, and we're arguing about what the picture is, when really it's a freaking elephant, and we just need to continue to put all the puzzle pieces together so that we can see the whole thing clearly. And on that note, I have to get to work. But I love you guys, and I wanted to give you this energy update and prepare you for this week so ground find your sovereignty allow all of the purging that needs to come to dump out what is in your cup and allow yourself to be refilled with the light okay i love you guys have a good week